Hi, I'm David Kern. I'm a painter and I'd like to welcome you to this video. So here we go. I will have a go at uh, a kind of the way I normally start a watercolor portrait. And I'll perhaps I'll talk just a little bit about how that relates to other mediums as well, but it's predominantly the, the watercolor thing. Right, so um, so I start off with a little bit of sketching, right, makes sense, right, I mean I have done some portraits where I've uh, just, just dived straight in with the paint, but you know, really it works better for me when I know where I'm going. And I actually tend to use a little bit of charcoal. Now, uh, I just got into the habit of using charcoal, but you know, pencil, I, I use pencil too. And uh, sort of like you did this morning, I sort of try and make sure that I understand what's going on with the head first. But I don't do too much sketching. I just make sure that I've got enough lines in that I can kind of I can kind of tell myself where to put the paint. So So maybe that's uh Maybe I'd start with something like that, right? So, so I've not, uh, I've not really done anything other than sort of do a bit, a bit, a bit of layout, because I want to make sure that when I'm painting, you know, I'm not getting too constrained with my uh, my uh, drawing, and in fact, you'll see I kind of, uh, I kind of creep up on getting a bit of definition as I go. So then I take I take my brush with some uh, water, which I should have somewhere. Here we are, just water. Right, and, that, and and I I I start off using what two colours? What do you think I'm gonna use? Eh? Red, yellow, colors. Huh? Red, yellow, blue. No, no, what did I use? I, 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 I use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Right, in fact, I just I take mainly burnt sienna. And, as, and, uh, and perhaps a little bit of ultramarine blue as well, just to, uh, to, to knock the redness off of it. But predominantly, I'll use uh, I'll use that because what I want to do is just want to block in the form and get the uh, the perhaps the, the understand where the shadow areas are right. So okay. I'll just uh, swing this round a little bit. So I normally start somewhere at the top and I'll just look for for a little bit of form. And I dabble the paint all the way down. Perhaps something like that. Uh, I certainly go into. I always make sure I go into the uh, find find the eye socket because uh, following our friend uh, John Singer Sargent, right? You know the the eye should fall into place when I when I get the the shapes right. So so I'll just. Just get a little bit of paint on there. Right, so that's uh, that's that's kind of got myself organized, and then I put more paint on. I put more paint, and I'm looking predominantly at shadows, but not not exclusively. Uh, but I, I I then I then take the same ultramarine blue, same burnt sienna, with a little bit darker mix of ultramarine blue and then I'll put a, put in areas that are perhaps even a little darker than the, than I started with Really, I'm just finding any spots that I feel could do with a bit of paint. 
certainly, in this case, I'd probably want to focus a little bit more on the eye socket. There we go. There we go. Perhaps something like that. The uh, I've forgotten the ear, so maybe I'll go and put a little bit. I go back and forth a bit. It's not like a total. I don't do the same thing every time. But uh, I maybe I mainly want to get enough blocking in that I feel that I've got an understanding of the form of the, the face. So I'm looking predominantly at lights and darks. I'm trying to get something to form in three dimensions. As you can see, I mean, I, I'm fairly loose with my brush strokes, but I might clean some of these up afterwards. I don't mind it running, actually, so I'll, I'll just let that run. That does, that's not a bad one. But, uh, if I don't like the run, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll do, I'll just sweep it up a little bit later. Later, or if I really don't like it, I'll sort of take it out immediately. So then, what I do is I turn that same mix. See, I'm like a long playing record, and I'm still still using burnt sienna ultramarine blue, but this time I'll turn it definitely slightly end of the blue range. If I was doing acrylics and oils, I'd be doing much the same thing but on a on a on a sort of mid-tone basis. The big difference here is I'm I'm retaining my white space so that I can uh, I can I can uh, I can work with that a little bit later on, right? But then so I will then take as I say take a, a a darker mix and then I will actually go and make a little bit of a stab at where the features are and put in some proper darks where I think darks need to go. Still using the same brush. Until I get really scared, I just keep using the same brush. <laughs> <coughs> so people say, well, do I wait for it to dry? Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes I just see, see, what, I see what happens when I put some paint in to... Uh, is dark underneath this nose as well, so I'll just put that. Uh, looks like he's got a nosebleed there, doesn't it? If I take that out. <laughs> So while I got this bluish paint, I'm going to put a bit of paint in his hair as well because if if, if people have got uh, sort of grey or dark or anything that's definitely not quite brown, I will tend to put in some. Uh, some some form of grayish, bluish, grayish coloring for the hair. As you can see, I do it very roughly, right? I just try and try and kind of go with the flow and get a few uh, a few brush strokes going, and then leave it alone if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll go back in and do some more work on it later on. 
Yeah, yeah, but maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay as a as a, as a base, right? Um, and it looks a little bit messy at this stage, but I can always go and clean it up with uh, with some kind of brush that's a little bit stiffer. Sometimes I use just an acrylic brush. Sometimes I've got a a brush that uh, that's just a, a little stiffer watercolor brush. So, uh, but I will go and anything I don't like around about this stage, I will go and change. Like maybe if I didn't like this line, I'd go and soften it just with the uh, with a brush and a bit of water. Is the, uh, a stain no, actually, that's a that's a really really good. Uh, Really good point, Linda, because the, I, I'm using burnt sienna and ultra green blue, and both are very non staining. Because if it's staining, you're sort of up a tree. I, if it's staining, I totally agree with you. But the only, the, the only way I can do this is I'm using non staining paints, right? And, the, uh, and that's that's how I, uh, I, 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 I tackle my watercolors. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not some are quite so. Uh, some are opaque, some are yeah, because yeah. yeah, if, if I use the if I use if I use like phthalo blue, for example, that's the right? one that's stained. Then that then then I couldn't do this because it would just it would just sit in the in the paper and won't come out. Whereas this, if I want to change this uh, the line of his neck here, right? I could just wash it out and change it. Right. So, so it gives me quite a lot of uh, opportunity to sort of go back and change things. That said, I kind of like my portraits to or my watercolors to be a little bit jazzy, right? So, so I'm not actually going to go and change that too much, right? I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some skin color on, right? Or what, whatever <coughs> semblance of uh, color that. One might think is going to be skin color, but just before I do that, I just feel I do want to give him a little bit of a five o'clock shadow or something of some sort. A little more serious thing. I'm always going around changing things, right, to, to, to get somewhere. But maybe that's okay, right? So, uh, so then what I do is I mix up what, mix up uh, just like oils and acrylics, right? I'll use a loser of crimson and a bit of lemon yellow, yeah. Or in this case, in this case, it's really. It's 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 really the yellow that my 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 blue brush gets into, which turns it green-ish, right? So so yes, it's meant to be lemon yellow, but uh, or it or it may have been lemon yellow at the beginning, but it's uh, if you put it's certainly a little. Color, right? it's gonna be, you put green in the facial color, isn't it going to be a little? I'm gonna put green in the face cups. I'm definitely gonna put green, but not 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 right now. Right now, I'm just gonna be putting some uh, a little bit of a wash down the to give it some to give it some color. And uh, actually, I just need to clean my palette up just a little bit. I don't want it to be dirty. They are. Everyone thinks I use a dirty palette, but I'm not. I'm actually quite. Uh, <laughs> when I need it to be clean, I'll make it clean. So a lot of the time it doesn't matter so much, but uh, sometimes you do need a clean palette. And uh, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting some pink color over the portrait. And I could do it fairly loosely because what I've 
what I've started is actually holding it together a bit, right? So, so it's a, it now she's got the bit of colour in his ear there, so I just want to actually make that even a little bit redder. So there we are. So uh, so once I once I'm comfortable with that, and I go back and forward a little bit. Like right now, I think some of the some of the blues and uh, and grays are maybe washing out a little bit here. I just want to add a little bit. Doing this wet on wet. Sure. Mm -hmm. Quite blue there, I think. That's when you start. I go around. Use the same paint wherever I feel it might work, and. Uh, just trying to decide right now whether I think it's looking a bit messy or not. I like this, but he's got quite a strong cheekbone, so I don't want that paint there. He's got this strong cheekbone, I've got to have that. So I've got to take that out, back up to the hairline, which is in the wrong place. So I'll just bring this down a little bit just to And he's got this this mark on his face, so I want to keep that. Although I've actually got it a little bit high, so maybe I just so do a little bit cutting back, and I'm just looking at things that are right and things that are wrong. His eye socket comes out here more, so I'll go and add a bit of paint here, right? And I'll, I I I will use kind of some bluish paint just to kind of go around and correct. Some other times I might use something slightly different. But uh, what else? This cheek is looking a little bit, a little bit sorry too, right? So maybe I'll just cut that back. I try not to cut things back too much because otherwise I kind of take the, I take the, the joy out of it. But uh, perhaps I should put a little bit of warm paint in around his mouth as well, I think, perhaps. And his neck's looking a bit uh, undefined, so what can I do there? I think I need some, uh, perhaps some dark paint in here. And then a bit of light in here, I think. So I just take, take my brush and scrub the neck out a little bit. If I do it too much, you know, that's an opportunity for me to go and put some put a little bit of paint back in. Trying a bit of purple just to see how that goes. Because <laughs> I think I'm going to like a little bit of purple in here as well. Starting to look like somebody sucked him in the eye. Yeah, that might be a little heavy, that thing. <laughs> I'll take that out. Prize fitter. Just wanted a couple of purplish notes in there for some reason.
There we go. So, um, so now I think I will put a little bit of blue in as well, just to, just to show how safe it is. And so I'm going to put a little bit of cerulean blue in as well. Because if you've got if you've got lights, but uh, as Bob, Bob Ross said, uh, you have to have the dark to show the light. So in the same way, you have to have the blue in order to show the orange, right? Or or the warm. You have to have the cool in order to show the the uh, in order to show the the warm. So I'm now going to just put a little bit of cerulean blue down this side. I'm going to clean it up a little bit with, I'm not going to clean it up too much, but uh, just while it dries, I'll just do something about the, uh, thanks for that. I could put the clothes in, but I think I'm just going to be a little bit graphic about it. those strips kind of come down where logically his uh, his shirt would go so so I'm now but I would say it's putting in my darks. You know, I always say, say, say put in your darkest darks. And actually, if you can see, I've just decided that because I put blue down here, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna paint with blue, not because it is blue, but because I've used it down the bottom. And there's just one last thing I want to do. Maybe that. So there you are. That's my uh, that's my uh, portrait without trying to be too uh, uh, prescriptive about it. And uh, I think that's worked out not not too bad. Uh, I would probably spend a little bit of time just kind of tidying it up. I certainly would want that line to be a bit sharper. I'll just do it with a little bit of line. Right, so it's just to, uh, and the same same would be true, although I, I don't actually feel like I want to put a lot of line down this side of his face. If I wanted to, I, I would I would go and do a little bit of line work just to uh, just to bring out the character, rather than, you know, sweating it with, uh, with, with a lot of, uh, lot of watercolour. So, uh, 
course, at this stage, I keep on thinking, find, finding things I want to do to it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going